Athens, Georgia, and the Low Country. This is WJCL 22 Morning News. See us now. Give me one second. Hold on. Right now on WJCL 22 Morning News at 6, the director of Black Panther put in handcuffs inside this Atlanta bank because a teller thought he was trying to rob the place. What he did that made her call for help and why the bank now says they had it all wrong. Government spending bill in place. I'm Christopher Salas in Washington with what's in the House approved bill and what was left out. Big changes could be coming to Georgia from more voting restrictions to changes in the classroom. We're laying out two new measures on the table this morning. And it's a busy qualification week in the Peach State. The big announcement expected from Georgia's governor today and the latest messages from those hoping to take his spot. It is right now 6 o'clock on this Thursday morning and we are live out in the low country this morning. We're in Buford at Henry C. Chambers Waterfront Park where it's raining out there. Other than that, it's kind of calm. We want to thank you so much for starting your day with us here on WJCL 22. Good morning, everyone. I'm Emma Hamilton here with our meteorologist, Jonathan Myers. And Jonathan, I normally am not happy about rain. Yeah. However, the, the pollen off my car, my yep. itchy nose, it's it, okay. You know, it's actually washing some of that yellow pollen yeah. out, which is a good thing. It's been quite dry, much needed rain mm -hmm. is what we are seeing this morning. And the bulk of the rain this morning, Emma, uh, it will be this morning, but by the afternoon, we will see some uh, less chances of rain after lunch. I'm here. Here's a live look, Chatham Parkway in Savannah, wet roadways out there. You see the folks are making their way to work this morning. And like I said, kind of a sloppy uh, morning rush hour commute for us as you head out the door for school and also for uh, work this morning. And here's that forecast that'll take you through out the daytime. Best chance of rain will be from right now up to probably about mid morning. But notice after nine o'clock, the chances of rain really drops off uh, after lunchtime. Just a few showers around through the afternoon. Not as warm today either. Afternoon highs only into the upper 60s. So live radar is showing where that rain is rolling through this morning, mainly around uh, Beaufort, where you just saw that live look this morning. Also in Savannah, uh, there seems that light rain from Savannah toward the islands. Also Hinesville, some steadier rain there in parts of McIntosh County, also around Little Wissy. A lot of the inland areas, I know Statesboro, Valdelia, and also uh, Sylvania, just seen a few sprinkles as we're starting the morning off. And here's some impact weather coming up uh, Saturday morning. We will see a good chance to rain as a strong cold front moves through. Unfortunately, a freeze is likely on Sunday morning. I'll detail that weekend forecast in less than 10 minutes. Jonathan, thanks so much. We are heading out to Rinkin this morning at Highway 21 and Brentwood Drive, where it looks like it is really quiet out there this morning, but you can see those uh, wet roadways. What's going on, my man? Trying to put money on my own. You said what? Trying yeah, what's, is your phone? It is. New police body cam footage reveals the director of Black Panther was put in handcuffs inside this Atlanta bank during filming earlier this year. Police say a teller called 911 thinking Ryan Coogler was trying to rob the place. Now, this all happened back in January when film crews were filming the Marvel movie Black Panther 2. You may remember parts of the movie were filmed in Brunswick back in October. Right now, we want to walk you through every bombshell moment in this brand new body cam footage. First, you can see right here officers putting him in handcuffs. Now, when they put him in the back of the patrol car, he explained what really happened. Did the officers explain what's going on while we're out here? Not really, man. All right, so we got a yeah, call. I, 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 heard it, I heard somebody ask if I passed a note. Yeah. Kugler says he did pass a note, but that it was because he was withdrawing a large sum of cash to pay one of his employees and didn't want to get robbed himself. It's a medical assistant that works in my house that prefers to be paying in cash. Every time I make a withdrawal to pay her, you know, because it's a, a large amount, she works a lot. Yeah. You know, if I if I don't if I don't write down on a note how much I went out, and then I don't want it ran through the money counter right there at the desk. Ends up looking at because they just hearing money going through the money through the account. And I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe getting money out like that. Atlanta police say the teller saw the note and immediately called for help, saying Coogler was trying to rob the bank. That's the reason why we're out here, and that's the reason why we detained everybody because we didn't know exactly what was going on. So you make these. I, I, I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you, man. Y'all never, like, never asked me what was going on. Because of the seriousness of the call, we don't just come out, and unfortunately, in a situation like that, you don't get the benefit of the doubt. We detain, and then we ask questions later. 
Bank of America, the bank involved in this incident, has since apologized and released a new statement. It says in part, we deeply regret that this incident occurred. It should have nev it sh never should have happened, and we have apologized to Mr. Kugler. Coming up this morning on Good Morning America, Steve Osinsami is joining us live from Atlanta with the fallout from this mistake the entire nation is buzzing about this morning. You can catch GMA right after our show starting at 7 o'clock. All new this morning, the so-called Don't Say Gay Bill being debated in Florida is now being discussed in Georgia. The controversial bill wants to make it so lessons on sexual orientation and gender identity can't happen until after the third grade. It also allows parents to sue school districts if they believe the policy is being violated. All new this morning, Georgia Republicans are fighting for more voting restrictions across the state on top of the new voting restrictions signed into law last year. You'll remember in March of last year, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp signed Senate Bill 202 into law. It added more voter ID requirements for absentee ballots, limited drop boxes, and made it a crime to give voters in line food and water. Yesterday, nearly a year later, Georgia Republicans introduced House Bill 1464. According to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, it would enable public ballot inspections, restrict nonprofit funding, and empower the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to look into all allegations of fraud. These bills began after former President Donald Trump lost the state of Georgia in the 2020 election. Outrage this morning after a Russian airstrike hit a children's and maternity hospital in Ukraine. The attack happened yesterday during a temporary ceasefire to allow Ukrainians to escape. Officials say at least 17 people were hurt, but many children and women in labor were trapped under the rubble. The bombing led Ukraine's president to once again demand a no-fly zone be declared over the country. The nuclear site lost power yesterday and emergency diesel generators kicked on. The reason for the, out, for the outage is unclear. The two countries also held their first cabinet-level meeting since the start of the invasion. They're expected to meet again in Turkey today. Overnight, the U.S. House approved a $13.6 billion Ukraine aid package for Ukraine. Now, we do want to check in with our Christopher Salas, who's in Washington, walking us through the drastic push to get help to Ukrainians. The crisis in Ukraine provided urgency as Congress members wanted to get something passed. As part of the omnibus bill, Congress approved more than $13 billion to help with the crisis in Ukraine. About half of the money will go to costs associated with the United States, sending troops to neighboring NATO allies and bolstering their defenses. The other half is to provide aid for refugees and money for sanctions on Russia. One significant provision that was left out of this government spending package, $15 billion for combating the pandemic. The Speaker of the House said it was stripped, knowing it would not get the votes in the Senate. Let's grow up about this, OK? We're in a legislative process. We have a deadline uh, for keeping government open. We have a lively negotiation. It has to be bipartisan. We want it to be bipartisan, but in the Senate, you need 60 votes. Senators say they want a full audit of COVID money that's already been appropriated before they vote on any new COVID money. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says they'll bring up COVID funding in a separate vote. In Washington, I'm Christopher Salas. This morning, Good Morning America will have extensive team coverage of the crisis in Ukraine, including a look inside a hospital treating victims and the latest on the refugee crisis. They're also digging into safety concerns surrounding Ukraine's fragile nuclear power plants. You can catch GMA right after our show this morning, starting at 7 o'clock. Happening today, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp is expected to make his run for re-election official. He's set to file his qualification paperwork this morning at 9. New video this morning showing the moments a Georgia governor candidate Stacey Abrams arrived to qualify for the race. Abrams announced stops for her first campaign tour titled the One Georgia Tour. It is set to start next week and will feature several stops including Midway, Augusta and Atlanta. There's another big name in the governor's race, former U.S. Senator David Perdue. He said yesterday he's the only candidate who can unite the Republican Party against Stacey Abrams. He has the support of former President Donald Trump.